In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory, now and forever to the ages of ages. Amen. Because you guys leave the church before the sermon, I'm going to teach you about today's gospel. So today's gospel is about a blind person. Have you ever seen a blind yeah. person? Well, yes, but not in real life. Not in real life. Yeah. When someone is blind, what do you do? How do you help them? You can lead them to where they need you, to go. You can lead them to where they need to go. And it you must be... Yes, or you can, they can have a service dog that can lead them. So when we have a blind person, they are always in the dark. And they can't see anything. They can't see who is who. And they can only hear, and then they will recognize you. So are we blessed that we have both ears and eyes to see and to hear? Mm -hmm. Are we thankful for our eyes and our ears that we have? Mm -hmm. Bravo. Very good. So today... There was a man who was sitting on the side of the road and he was totally blind. He could not see anything. And people were talking, going back and forth and doing things. And he was just sitting there and waiting for other people to give them some coins so that he can touch the coins and feel them and go buy things for himself to eat. And then all of a sudden, the crowd starts making more joyful noises. And can he see what's happening? No. Would he be excited? No, he couldn't, right? But would he be curious? Yes. Very curious because he couldn't see what's going on, but people were very joyful. And then what would he do? How can he know who's, what's going on? He could ask. He could ask. And that's because exactly. You can still talk. Even though you're blind and you can't see, doesn't mean you can't talk. That's right. He can't talk. He, he opened his mouth and he asked. He said, What's going on, guys? Why are you so happy? And one of the people said, Never mind. It's Jesus. And what do you think the blind man would do? He would go to Jesus or he tried to go to Jesus. He would try to go to Jesus. What do you think, Ella? What would the blind man do? Hmm? He got also very excited. Why did he get excited? What do you think? Because he could talk, so he could ask God to help him. Very good. So Jesus had done many, many miracles, and this blind man had always been listening to stories about Jesus. Have you heard stories about Jesus? Mm -hmm. So if Jesus was going by, would you recognize him? Yeah. Maybe, right? Yeah. Maybe yes, maybe not. But he couldn't see, he couldn't recognize, but he opened his ears. He kept his ears open so that although he couldn't see him, he could learn about him and he could recognize him, right? And then when they told him it's Jesus, he said, oh, this is my chance. I can go to Jesus and ask him what? Can you please make me please, please give me what I don't have. What did he not have? Money. No, no, no. Sight. Sight. He didn't he didn't have eyes. He couldn't see. And well he did have, have eyes, but he couldn't see because he was blind. Well, you know, some of the blind people sometimes they don't have eyes. Can you believe that? It's very, it's very tough, right? But this man, maybe Catherine is right. Maybe he had eyes. It's just he couldn't see. And if it was you and you needed something very badly from Jesus, what would you say? Uh, could you please? Please is very important, yeah, please. right? Please, would you do this for me? So this man said, please, in a different way. He said, Jesus. Have mercy on me. Be kind to me. Be merciful to me. And Jesus didn't hear it. Because there were so many people crowded around him and making noise. And then one of the people said to the blind man, go sit over there. Jesus 
doesn't need you. You don't need Jesus. You get out of the way. If somebody told you not to go to church, you don't need Jesus, what would you do? I would say, church. no, I need Jesus and I, that's it. I need Jesus and I'm going to go to him. If someone says to us, you don't need Jesus, you can't go to Jesus, you should not listen to them, right? Like this blind man, also he need, knew that if he goes to Jesus, he can heal his eyes. He can start seeing. But someone was telling him, you don't go because you're a blind man, you go away from me. And what did he do? He got up, he threw off the jacket, that the worn out, dirty jacket that he had on himself. And he ran after Jesus and said, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus, son of God, have mercy on me. Jesus, have mercy on me. And do you know what happened? The gospel said, and Jesus stood still. He was amazed. He was frozen. He was looking at him. I'm like, oh my goodness. Even people couldn't stop him. So what happens when we get up in the morning on Sundays and we remember we have to go to church? We, sometimes some people, when they wake up in the morning, the laziness gets on the way. They say, oh, I want to sleep another 10 minutes, another three minutes, another five minutes. And then when we, they wake up, it's already 1030. The liturgy is almost over, right? And they say, oh, I'm late. I'm not going to go to Jesus today. Tiredness and laziness gets on the way. And this person didn't go to Jesus, right? So with this blind man, who was getting on the way? The other people. So when you go to college, when Peter goes to college next year, there will be lots of things happening that will say, don't go to church today. That's okay. You can go next week or you don't really need to go to church. Don't worry about it, right? And what will happen? What do you have to have? You have to have a strong will. You know what a will is? Why do you need a will? Do you need a will? Yes. Yeah. Do you know that if people did not have a will, they could not move their finger. Yeah. Like in order to move your finger, you need a willpower. You need to tell, your brain has to tell your finger, move, and then your finger will move. If you are extremely lazy, you'll have your finger like that and you say, no, I don't want to move it. No, it's too hard, right? When I was young, a boy, maybe 14 years old, 15 years old, somebody taught me something very important. He said that you should exercise your will every day. This is something he taught me to do. He said, when you sit at a table, put all kinds of good food on a table, look, or your mom puts lots of good food on a table, choose one or two very favorite of your foods and try not to eat it this time, just this time. Okay, if there's feta cheese and you love it. So today we are gonna sit at a table and you're gonna look at a table and say, Today, I love feta cheese, but today I'm not going to eat it. And then you eat all the other things, but not feta cheese. And then next time you get at the table, and you see roasted lamb on the table. And you say, oh, that's my favorite. And then you're going to say to yourself, today, I'm not going to eat that. that, that so when you exercise like that, your will becomes very, very strong. And then when you want to do something, it's like a muscle. You know, if you don't use your arm, have you ever put your arm in a cast? If you put your arm in a cast and you never use it, your muscles become very weak. What do we, what do we call it? Atrophy. We call it atrophy. Can you remember that? So when your muscles become so weak because you haven't used them, these muscles on this hand are very strong because you're constantly using it and you're using it twice because this one is in a cast, right? So this one becomes very strong. You have all kinds of muscles. This one becomes very weak. That's why you need to also use your will. So this man, this old man, a blind man, was a very strong person. He didn't listen to other people who were trying to stop him from going to Jesus. It's like going to college and somebody telling you, oh, you don't have to go to church today. Let's go to the bar and have a party. So this man went to Jesus no matter what. And Jesus looked at him and said, this is an awesome, awesome, strong man. Are the Christians strong or weak? Strong. Christians are supposed to be strong, like this blind man. Are you a strong person or are you a weak person? Uh -huh. Ella is a strong person. David, are you a strong person? 
Very good. <laughs> Catherine, are you a strong person? Theodore? Peter, are you a strong person? Yes. Anna, are you a strong person? Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Eleni? Yeah, Markella? Everybody should be very strong. What does it mean to be strong, though? Not are bullies strong people? No. What other kind of people are they? They are very weak people, right? Mm -hmm. So strong people are the ones who do good things because the hardest thing to do is good. is good. Evil things, bad things are very easy to do. Like everybody is on edge about to do something bad. What do they need to stop them? Pull themselves back. And what do they need for pulling themselves back? Willpower. Willpower and clean mind. They need to have a clean mind so that they and then when you pull yourself back with your willpower and then you need to think of good things and then you need more willpower to do good things bravo uh, get up let's say a prayer in the name of the father and the son and the holy spirit amen our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory, now and forever, to the ages of ages. Amen. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Father.